hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send your, us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. I now invite the children to go to Children's Chapel and the congregation to be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the Book of Acts. With Paul and Silas, the priest of Philippi in Macedonia, a Roman colony, and they were going to the place of prayer. He met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune teller. While she followed Paul, and while she followed Paul, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. Days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to her, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when our owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them out before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and our advocating customs are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined them in the town, and the magistrates had stripped had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them there secure. 
following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet to the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself for we are all here. The jailer called for lights and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought him outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized to help to the way. He brought them up into the hospital and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come, 
and let everyone who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come Lord Jesus. Grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. Jesus Christ, according to God. Jesus prayed for his disciples, and then he said, I also go my way on behalf of you, and also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may the glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you. And these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord.
May I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. It is always a joy to be here at St. Michael's among old, now, a lot I consider old friends, right? It's been, a, I was reminded 2017 was uh, my first sojourn here. My heavens, it's been a while. And I will say that uh, I am grateful for something else. This has been, as you all know, what I would call a terrible week, just off the back. And frankly, it's depressing. And I thought to myself, okay, you're called to be a priest of the church. You're called to believe in the gospel, you do. And you're called to give a message of hope and healing. Well, now there's the challenge, isn't it? Hard to sing a song of hope when things are so bad. I am, I believe, literally clinging to God's word this morning as to a lifeline. I realized this when I happened upon a New York Times newsletter on wellness. The term explored was psychic numbing. I thought, oh yeah, that's me. Psychic numbing. I am just plain numb. I connected with this phrase and it was happening to me and probably to many of you. The tears I feel when I think of the children in Uvalde, the people in Buffalo and other places, as well as the tragedies around the world, they threaten to drown me, but worse yet, to paralyze. What do we do with this? So begin my question, and I think my question is probably your question. What can I do? How can I continue to live with a compassionate heart and resist walling myself off from the horrors that we face? How can I possibly do that? And then we read our gospel narrative, which is set this, the last verse we read, verse chapter 17, verse 26, is the last verse before John recounts the passion of Jesus. It is the last verse before death and resurrection. And so we read, Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you. And these, my disciples, know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. That God's love may be in us and Christ in us. Earlier in this gospel, we read in the gospel of John, the total text, we read, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus tells his disciples that the world will not receive them. It will not be an easy journey. Disciples of Jesus are on a rough road. And if you don't know that this morning, you will never know it. This is a rough road we are on. We are in a hard place. So what do we do? We pray. We pray as Jesus prayed. Father, forgive them. We pray as Paul prayed during his captivity. Paul prayed. We, we, read, we read that Paul and Silas were praying and singing songs of praise to God. As prisoners who had just been beaten badly and put in shackles, they were still praying. It's a rough road we're on, and we're called to pray. And the next verse is so important to me. The other prisoners were listening to them. 
The other prisoners were listening to them. The world, believe it or not, is listening to us, the believers, those who are holding prayer services, singing hymns of lament, of praise, of hope. We are, as the poet and writer May Sarton phrased it, the hopeful gardeners. Her whole phrase is, help us to be the always hopeful gardeners of the spirit. In this moment in our liturgical year, we are between ascension and the coming of the spirit. We are in a place in between. And we wait for the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, fill our hearts with God's love. We cannot succumb to psychic numbness. That is despair in some form. So the cost is dear, but the call is clear. We may cry out with the songs of lament, we, but we cry out in hope. Go to the Psalms this week. Look at the Psalms of lament, Psalm 120, Psalm 121. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my prayer. And when you read the Psalms of Lament, they always end with a word of hope or trust or belief in God and God's mercy and God's rescue. We cry out because our heart, in our hearts, we know God is there with us in suffering and pain. We cry out because we believe that Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again, which is what we heard in Revelation this morning. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. I am. I am. This is a simple phrase. It is the holy name of God. I am the Alpha and the Omega. God is our beginning and our ending on this very rocky road. A scholar, William Willimon, wrote in a reflection on the Acts of the Apostles, they, the disciples, are told that they are witnesses to the end of the earth, and their first response is prayer. The action demanded of the church is more than busyness and strenuous human effort. Disciples have been told that the promised kingdom is a gift to be given in God's own time, and that the promised spirit is also by God's grace. Their, <clears throat> their mission requires more than even their earnest striving. So too for us, our mission requires more than our earnest striving, more than the work we do. Disciples of Jesus pray. We pray whether we are in chains or on the cross or in a very good and happy space. It's that simple, we pray. We too have the promise of the gift of the Holy Spirit to empower us, to prevent us from falling into psychic numbness. So this is our moment, a significant pause in our remembrance of the mighty acts of God in and through Jesus Christ. It is our moment to pray. And when I pray, I often think of that wonderful hymn, There is a Balm in Gilead. Remember those words? Sometimes I feel discouraged. Well, that would be understatement in about now. And think my work is in vain. Well, if you've been preaching the gospel for 35 plus years and the world is still a mess, you have to wonder, don't you? You're tempted, I'm tempted, but I pray. 
and then the next line of the hymn. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. I can't explain it. I just know it is. If you cannot preach like Peter, if you cannot pray like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus and say, he died for all. Amen. Amen. Help us to be the always hopeful gardeners of the Spirit. Amen. We now stand as we are able and confess our faith in the words of the truth. We believe that in one mouth. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God and God, God This morning, I'm going to six on page 392. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice today, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victim, fear, justice, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who perhaps. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who are and all who seek the truth. For our presiding Bishop Michael, for our bishops Susan, Jennifer, and Gordon, and for those who are standing for election in our diocese, for Mark, for Gideon, for Joe, and for Alan, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We remember those who are sick in our community. We pray this today, especially for Nana Miller. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for all those who offer care 
comfort in our communities, the nurses, doctors, and first responders. We will exalt you, O oh God, our King. We pray for all who have died, especially the children who have been victims of war and violence, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful God, in your compassion for you. Praise God in your faith. And so hold us by your spirit. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all of us, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. So good peace to all of you. <laughs> oh my gosh. We live in such interesting times. So um, you all know what's going on in the parish better than I do, but I know next week you're gonna have a picnic. That's a great collective thing. And I know it will be glorious, such wonderful grounds as we have here. I often think of the beautiful flowers and things that are here and Everybody works on so diligently. It's lovely. Um, as as I pray in the election for our next bishop is next Saturday. So uh, what do disciples do? They pray. Right? So we pray that there is a good spirit of the convention and that we have an a election. Uh, God has put four wonderful people. Uh, willing to take the risk of standing for election. It's quite a thing when you think about it. Um, and then you'll put yourself out there. And uh, I personally, of course, have been involved up to my eyeballs in it. So uh, <laughs> I'll be really glad when Saturday comes. Uh, <clears throat> so pray for everybody, and especially our delegates, as they look for the spirit to guide them. And now let us walk in love as Christ has loved us and given himself as an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. After his glorious resurrection, he openly appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, there we might also be and reign with him in glory. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all, who stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Thank you. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when we give a glance, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this, for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is Christ. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, our Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. To be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also, that we may pray for you to serve this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask. In your Son Jesus Christ, by Him and with Him and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are willing to say, Amen. Thank you. 
Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God from the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and treat on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Making a slight change to the new schedule. The communion it will be 676. There is a ball in the field. Wow. 676. <laughs>
Let us pray. Worshiped God, let us now move into God's world as a servant people, servant of God's word, and servants in God's world. May God grant us the grace to hear what we are called to be and do. And may the blessing of the most holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us on our journey. Amen.